finally, 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 I get a chance to finally introduce one of my very best friends, Richard Big Daddy Schoenberger, otherwise known as the Silverback. Me and Richard used to be training partners for over 20 years, and we did battle every fucking Monday night at a little gym in Norwalk, California, which I done forgot the fucking name of. <laughs> American Eagle Gym in Norwalk, California. A little small gym, but it would be rocking every Monday night. I want to read this off just a, a list of facts about Big Daddy so you'll know some of the accomplishments that this man has had throughout his long career that, you know, first of all, he wants everybody to know that he's a very proud husband and a father and son. He's just a sweet motherfucker. <laughs> For you motherfuckers don't know. He just, but well, we'll talk about that later. Let Everybody me get accused of being sweet. <laughs> yeah, he's just a sweet motherfucker. <laughs> Started lifting weights as a sophomore in high school for football. He weighed 165 pounds when he started lifting. And when the school gym was closed, he go to lift one <laughs> he go lift one of his daddy's VWs. To win a bet with his friend, he pushed the Camaro over two miles. And he loved it so much that he incorporated that version of training into his regular routine, pushing Camaros and shit. You see a lot of guys pushing shit now, but Big Daddy's one of the originators of pushing shit way back, like I said, before most of these punks was even born. Uh, so to win a bet with his dad, just after high school, he picked up a Volkswagen, because he, you know, just to prove it to his dad he could do it, picked up a Volkswagen and, and rolled it over. He gained over 30 pounds a year, after he started lifting. 30 pounds a fucking year. He bench pressed 425 when he was 16 years old. Now that's fucking, if it, if that's fucking incredible. I mean 16 year old, I mean grown, it ain't a whole lot of grown men can bench that much shit. But it's, it's fucking, this 16 years old, bench pressing 425 pounds. So that's fucking incredible. Uh, anybody knows anything about lifting weights or bench pressing knows that's fucking incredible. So he started out a strong motherfucker, obviously, to be able to bench press 425. And I thought I was really doing something to bench in 405 or 18. But he's 16, two years ahead of that, benching 20 more pounds. And top football weight when he's playing football was 292 pounds. He was playing defensive, defensive line at Cal Poly and San, San Luis Obispo. Okay, he had torn a knee when he was in junior college. Several people told him to start taking steroids to help him get back to the game faster. And he thought about it and decided, fuck that, he's gonna challenge himself to come back even better and stronger and bigger than ever without using steroids. So he worked extremely hard and he did come back better than ever and, foot and got a football scholarship to Cal Poly without fucking steroids. Now, uh, keep in mind when I read this list of accomplishments that everything on here was done 100% drug free without steroids. So after Cal Poly, he graduated to Webster University with straight fucking A's. So he's not only a big strong ass motherfucker, he's smart than a motherfucker too. He was awarded the student of the year by the university. Student of the year. Not athlete of the fucking year. Student of the year. That means a smart motherfucker. So his very first bench press competition when he was working at Rockwell on the space shuttle pro program. I told you he's a smart motherfucker. They held a competition. Comp competition. What the fuck is a competition? <laughs> it was a competition at the rec center. He entered it and won and he was hooked on powerlifting ever since that goddamn competition. In his first meet, he competed, of course, in the super heavyweight division, of course, what the fuck else division, <laughs> a drug-free, lifetime, and raw. Where raw means without the aid of any of these bench press shirts and all this extra paraphernalia and shit that these motherfuckers wear these days. They even had it nowadays with Big Daddy never, never wore that shit, probably because he seen me pass out there and he tried to put, put one on. So when you compare him to the all-time greats, you have to take those into consideration, those two things in consideration. Raw, that means in a fucking t-shirt, nothing in that fucking t-shirt but me, 
and goddamn drug free. And when you do that, it's going to be a very short list, a very short list of guys that bench press over 600 pounds. 14 years of competition, never lost a competition. Multiple time world champion, multiple time national champion, multiple time regional champion. The silverback, the legend of the fucking silverback. Best personal records, bench press, 625 pounds, raw, drug free. Military press, and I witnessed this shit with my own fucking eyeballs, and I've never seen another human being do this shit from that day to this one. You see a lot of guys, they'll, they'll, they'll put the, the weight on their uh, shoulders and you'll see a little jump or a little skip or a little uh, 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 hop when they do it. That is not a strict military press. When you do a strict military press, you stand the fuck still. You don't move and nothing move but this right here. You just press that shit. Squat 850 pounds. It, that's a good squat by his goddamn self. That's up there. But 850 pounds for 10 reps. High school football hall of fame. McDonald's youth hall of fame for football. Amateur athletic union, the AAU powerlifting hall of fame. Three different fucking halls of fame. He says this. He wants to give credit. See, he couldn't have done any of it without the support of his family and training partners. So Big Daddy, that's how Big Daddy is. He's very magnanimous. He wants to give credit to everybody else. But uh, if it wasn't for his hard ass work, all, none of that shit would have got done. The first time I met Big Daddy Richardson was a competition at the American Eagle Gym. It was a Halloween contest. Yeah, that was the one that the judge fell asleep. Yeah, that yeah, was it. Monster that was your first. That yeah. was it. That was the oh, whole first outside. Of, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Cool. Right, right, right. And when I see this motherfucker walking, I'm like, God damn it! They, I didn't know this man had real monsters at this motherfucker. I was feeling the same way about it. I'm like, so. oh my god. So Fred Sanchez was my training partner and. Uh, Lift off guy, and he was my, you know, my encouragement, the guy that root me on and shit. I looked at Fred, and Fred said, God damn, T, did you see that motherfucker? I said, wait a minute, motherfucker. <laughs> You're supposed to be encouraging me. <laughs> and all we could talk about was how fucking monstrous Big Daddy was. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, you ain't helping me. You're supposed to be pumping me up and telling me that I can beat anybody and fuck that guy. And he's tell, all he's telling me is, oh, God damn, fuck that. That fucking guy's a monster, T. I'm like, damn, well, you know what? You can take your ass home, Fred Sanchez. <laughs> this ain't helping shit. <laughs> what are you a super heavyweight? Two, uh, past three, 275? 318, I think. 318. Back, back then, something like that. So I was just over that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he barely made it over to 318. But you were the heavyweight, and then I was yeah, the super Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Daddy was the super heavyweight. So people thought, but they thought, because we were in the same contest, that and we were going back and forth in the weight, that we were competing against each other. We, in, in a way, we were, but we weren't, because we were in two different weight classes. But we were both trying to beat each other, as I recall right. So we went up and called for some... Uh, 580 or some shit like that? Somewhere around there. Yeah, some big number trying to flat out win. We both called for the same weight. I think we're both unsuccessful. Right. I won my weight and Big Daddy won his weight class. But we were trying to battle it out to get to lift the most weight for that for that night. And both wind up falling short. I think Big Daddy, he scared the shit out of me because he got real close on his attempt. I think I only got mine like halfway up. But Big Daddy came like this fucking close to locking that thing out. I was like, oh, God. Damn. My opening lift, I came down and I paused, and that's when the judge fell asleep. Yeah, yeah. The command of the yep, cop to go. That's right. And this motherfucker was snoring. So I'm just down there snore. and I looked over, over my shoulder, and he was out. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and go. <laughs> and the fucking head just was Because it was late at night. <laughs> motherfucker was tired. <laughs> he just was snoring, and he <laughs> held his paw. I said, damn, that's a long pause. <laughs> so Big Daddy started training at American Eagle, and we decided yeah. if... Uh, to get better, in order to get better, the best thing for us to do is to actually train together. Got to be good friends almost immediately. But 
good friends. I mean, just like uh, fighters in the UFC where they have good friends, but when it comes time, they have to fight their good friend. They forget about their friendship and try to knock that motherfucker's head off when they get inside their cage. We still friends all during the workout. We still laughing and having fun and shit, cussing and shit. But I was cussing. Big Daddy don't cuss. I'm the cussing. And that was so fucking funny that we are like polar opposites in that shit that, that we get along so well. It's like he's like my brother, but you got one brother, one the evil brother, the evil twin, <laughs> which is me. <laughs> we do all the cussing and shit. And you got then you got Snow White. <laughs> I'm walking to the contest. Which one of you motherfuckers is coming in second? <laughs> <laughs> and Big Daddy said, well, we're going to have a little fun. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it, Rich. Get shit faced. <laughs> Get pissed off. Tell him we're going to destroy him. We're going to bash your heads in and run you. Big like, no, we, we're, we're going to have a little fun. My whole thing was internal. Yeah. <laughs> I had all that stuff going in, on inside me, but that was just me. Yeah. I can only be me. Right. And so that's what I think made us both click so well together and yeah. drive each other so hard because we didn't even have to say anything. Mm -mm. It was just that look or that challenge when you go and throw an enormous amount of weight on the bench and just start throwing around all over the place. And I was like, I got to be something <laughs> better than that because I'm never going to live it down if I don't. So yeah, that's just the way it was. When he lays down on that goddamn bench press, that's where I think he got the fucking name, the nickname, the silverback, is because he fucking sounds just like a silverback gorilla when he's before he get ready to do his fucking <laughs> fucking just a few grunts and shit. It was just gas. Yeah. <laughs> How many people do you know in your gym that can bench press over six hundred pounds? It's a few, but it's just not that many. And then to have two guys do it. It, it just was unheard of it, especially, you got to put it in the context of 20 years ago, especially 20 years ago, you just didn't have a, a pair of monsters like that doing this. My last competition is my greatest contest. I've been invited. I got a, received an invitation from John Enzer himself, the uh, Enzer Designs. I got, I know, if you're a pilot, you know who this guy is. Big Daddy was my liftoff guy. He's always... If he was competing, I was his number one cheerleader. If I was competing, he was my number one cheerleader. And I decided that uh, I wanted to wear the bench press shirt for this particular meeting. Everybody fucking else at the contest had a bench press shirt. I wanted to wear a bench press shirt too. I promised myself that I was going to go 700 pounds for this contest or die trying. I got the, uh, the tightest bench press shirt I could find because they, I asked them what size I was. And I said, well, you know, give me a... I want the motherfucker snug. Yeah, like a dance skin. Yeah, yeah, like a dance skin. <laughs> it took three people to try to get this fucking bench press shirt on me. And I'm this fucking close to passing out to try to get this fucking shirt on. Try to bring 601 pounds down with this fucking shirt on. I get the thing halfway down and pow! It just, the shirt just fucking exploded. It busted, ripped right down the fucking middle. It fucking scared me so bad I just threw the shit back up. A lot of people thought I got the lift because it shot back up, but it was just Real fear. Fast. I went to do the third attempt with no shirt because I had fucked it up on the first attempt, so no bench press shirt. Uh, raw, I, I called for 705 pounds because that's what I said I went to the fucking meet to do, and I was determined to give 705 a ride. It would have been, it would have broke the, the uh, drug-free uh, record at that time. I wanted that really bad. Big Daddy's whispering to me, hey, look, you know, you, you got all out of breath and shit with the first thing and maybe do something conservative. And I know you can do 650. I know you got that in you. Just, 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 just do this. And, and I'm like, fuck that. It was a fucking fact. I'm going to do this shit. I'm going to show Big Daddy. I'm going to show everybody in the fucking audience that I'm going to do this fucking shit with a goddamn tank top on and I don't fucking need no. I was fucking psyched out of my gourd. I was fucking just... Oh, fuck it, I, I gave my own self the I am the one speech, and I fucking walked out there, and I laid down in front of all the fucking people, and the goddamn TV cameras was on me. Big Daddy lifted that shit up, and I was like, oh, and I brought that motherfucker down, and he went, e <laughs> I gave myself the fucking pump-up speech of the century. <laughs>
I, I was able to muster in about just enough room for Big Daddy to get his fingers <laughs> under. I, I, I had a long ass pause. Yeah. The Big Daddy was teaching me a lesson. <laughs> He's like, I told you, fucking ass to go 650. <laughs> Despite all the great advice in the world, <laughs> I went out there and I tried to do what I said I was going to do. In the last contest of my lifting career, I put everything on the fucking line. I was unsuccessful, but that's okay. So you get a sense of what, what, uh, what I mean when I talk about the man that Richard Schoenberg is. He comes in one night. Uh, we're at the American Eagle Gym. It was one Monday night, and we're fucking, and Big Daddy's never late. When I look at my watch, and he's like 30 fucking minutes late, I'm thinking that it's something seriously wrong. What the fuck is wrong? My, and my buddy been in an accident, and fucking what, what the hell's going on? I'm starting to get really worried. About 45 minutes, Big Daddy, I see him pull up. Oh, my buddy's here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm relieved. I can tell he's in turmoil, he's just fucked up. What the fuck could possibly be wrong with Big Daddy? I've never seen him distraught like this. So he comes in, and I'm almost afraid to ask it. I figure, you know, a family member, somebody must be died or passed away or some shit, a good friend, something. Got to be something like that for Big Daddy to look, you know, this distraught and disturbed. So I, I approach him with apprehension, and I said, Rich, what happened? <laughs> I said, what happened, Big Daddy? <laughs> and he said, dropped his head, <laughs> and he looked down at the ground, and he shook his head like this. And he said, I ran over a cat. Yeah, I was pretty upset. Yeah, he I'm was I'm an animal lover. He's an animal lover. And I said, oh, my God. I was trying to. Act sympathetic. I really didn't give a fuck. I but, I try, yeah, but I was trying to act a little sympathetic. Like, wow, you ran over a cat, Big Daddy? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, damn. I was like, are, we, are you going to be able to work out? I was like, he was fucking torn up over the shit. Yeah. I tried to swerve to miss it, hit it with the front wheels. Yeah. And then I tried to swerve again, to, so I didn't hit it with the back, but then I hit it with my back wheels, too. He said, and I got out to see if the cat was okay. I did. I, I, did. I was dying. I said, mean, you got out to do what? <laughs> you alone, 375 pounds. I'm gaining weight. Plus the beer. <laughs> You're going to be 400 for this story over. Plus, plus the fucking front and back tire. <laughs> Ain't one driving no compact car. <laughs> Big Daddy was still sad. That shit was fucking hilarious. Look, that's what, when I tell you he got a big fucking heart, that's what I mean, man. He was fucking tore up that whole workout, man. I felt we so sorry. We had a sorry. great workout that yeah. day. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was an angry workout. Oh, my God. And they, they say, you know, weightlifters are known as meatheads, and this is a, a world champion weightlifter, but he's very smart. He wor worked at, at Rockwell on the space program. Who he worked for now, Big Daddy? Worked for the Federal Aviation administration. He broke the mold. When you talk about meatheads and, and strong guys and think, oh, all big strong guys are dumb. Not this one. From the days of powerlifting and we're both, you know, conquering the world and, and putting on shows of people to now I have to lean on him and just and, and between him and Leslie to, to put me together and, and piece me together enough so I can go out there and, and smile and shake your hand and pretend like everything's fucking fine. But if it wasn't for Big Daddy there to hold me up, a lot of times I wouldn't have been able to make it. And, well, I, and, I, and I think the big thing is that people understand better now when they talk about you and they talk about you having the heart of a lion. And that whole thing, that's your character. That's all about what's inside. And you do everything you possibly can to make sure everybody has a good time and you meet every single person. I don't see a lot of people out there at the Fit Expos that after they're done with their session at their, their booth that walk the entire line before you leave. And that, that says something about you. And, and as far as relying on me, we've relied on each other over the years. There's no way that I would have been able to do the kind of things that I was able to do without this guy right here. There's no way. 
I know that for a fact because if he didn't challenge me to be the best I could be, we, we wouldn't be training together. It's, it's just a matter of fact. When we went to war, you either bring everything you got or don't even show up. It's just not going to happen if you're not going to bring your best. But you know what? It motivates you. And then we just continued to battle <laughs> every single Monday night. And you know what? I just I thank you for always being there. All right, motherfuckers. Thank you. <laughs>